Hi, hello everyone. <laughs> Very nice to see you and I hope I'm properly live now and I'm so excited to show you something completely new. As you can see, we have a completely new name. It's called Talented Talents 360. So we're going to spread our talents throughout the world and make it even more exciting. And I said we, why did I say we? I'm going to introduce you to my team just now. That's a major, major difference here. <clears throat> And that's really exciting. So everything has been changed. There's so much happening since last week. I got a lot of positive comments, but there were some comments that were critically very good. And we worked around the clock and we got a lot better. I see all my friends, I'm quickly uh, saying hello. I say hi to Jack Molden, my special friend Zach is there. I see Deagle, Jan Lester, Susan North. I'm just looking through all Kathy, RJ, and so on and so on. Uh, Mary, thank you so much, all of you. It's so nice. I see the screen um, uh, rolling there and I can see all of you, Sharon, so many. It's really wonderful to see you all. I'm so excited. And this channel is really about educational quality and, I, and that is the aim. So let's jump right into the agenda now. The agenda is as follows. Thank you. And now you can see what wonderful help I have. So hold your breath, I'm going to come to that one moment. We're going to talk, uh, it's a brand new show, as you can see, it's all about raptors now. Raptors are the most important, right? So, raptors, and then uh, we, go, we go on to the Etsu uh, Johnson City Nest. Then we'll go to the talent quiz, it'll be a bit different. Raptor science, I want to tell you something about eagle growth that is really interesting, done some research in this. Uh, David Hancock will be talking about the Madagascan uh, fish eagle. Really interesting. Remember last, last time we did the African fish eagle? Um, typically also, I've seen it many times in South Africa. Now we jump to the east coast, to this beautiful island of Ma Madagascar. And we're going to spend some time there. We're going to go through all the nests, of course, and so on and so on. So really quite exciting. What is a major change here? I'm just going to get out of the way here so you can read this. I have a talented talents team. There's Jenny, Nicole, Suzanne and Sherry. Four have joined me. If you have messages, anything coming in, now don't send them to Zasse Photo anymore. Send them to Zasse Media. Zasse Media. All my helpers, these wonderful raptors will help. So Kevin has helped incredibly with the phone system. Remember, we had so many problems with the phone system. All that's been solved. So it's Kevin and uh, Nicole have been doing so much. What we really want to do here is reach out to all the educators. If you have ideas, bring them in, please. Bring them in. It's, it's so important. So send them again. Send everything to Zasse Media. It's not Zasse Photo anymore. Zasse Media. Because the whole Raptor team will catch it, right? Uh, the talents quiz is... Uh, coming to an amazing new level, I'll give you one hint. Pay careful attention today, pay careful attention, because the rules have changed, it's more exciting. Three can wait in a queue for, for the quiz. Three people can wait in a queue now. So it's wonderful, it's not just one like fighting for the first. The first three will get a place and will will um, subsequently in, in, series, in the series come into the call. The first one gets the main question. That was a submission that we got from Northeast Florida Nest. Uh, beautiful what happens next. And then once that person answers the correct thing, the other two get a chance, but they're going to be questioned from the quiz, from the, from the lecture today. Okay, so pay attention. Of course, I want you all to win, but just pay attention, right? So that's what it's all about. So let's jump right in. You can see that's the back of my studio too. So every, got, got all the screens set up. Everything's beautiful and ready to go. I do want to tell you, which is really important, it's a we now. What is the aim of what I'm trying to do here? The aim is to get a, a not-for-profit educational uh, channel where the finances are separate. At the moment, this is still not the case. You, um, I've, I've been asked if I can put up my, my smug mug Zasse photo again. Well, here it is. You can access it. If you, if you want to help with donations, that is a great way of doing it. And I promise you, you'll get a beautiful image for this. Smug mug does a great work of getting prints out to the way they should be. And that's why I'm back in there. So give that a thought if you want to have a nice big eagle picture on your wall or there's anything that you would like me to include that you see in the library, I'm ready for that. Good. 
Well, then let's jump right into Etzel. I'm going to sit down now and let's jump right into Etzel. And um, that is the main feature nest. I hope Kevin is here. I'm just going to have a look. Hi, gentlemen, ghosts. I can see Belladonna is there. My goodness, uh, more and more people just coming in. It's wonderful to see you all. And um, so I want to greet Kevin Brooks. I won't have to talk much because Kevin gave a beautiful uh, really a beautiful t um, uh, interview and that has been nicely nicely done by my helpers in this case was Nicole she's put images right across and so it's a completely new way I don't have to jump again into screens and and drive you all crazy it's much much better so I'm gonna shut up now get myself out of the way here well hello everybody I've got Kevin here uh, Hello. Yeah, it's Kevin Brooks, and he is a student at the uh, Johnson City University. And they, as you know, that's the featured eagle nest that we're going to talk about today. And Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself first. Okay. So my name is Kevin Brooks, and I uh, so I was a student at East Tennessee State University. I got my master's degree in 2015 under Dr. Fred Alsop. He's a well-known ornithologist, and um, well, we just uh, made a hobby of looking at birds together and studying birds, and uh, he had this idea to put eagle cameras on, uh, I'm sorry, live streaming cameras on two bald eagle nests in the area um, in late 2014. And so we did our research. We looked at Berry College in North Georgia because it's famous. We also took a look at uh, Harrison Bay Eagle Nest, which is on a golf course, and we decided we could do that for the university. Well, that's fantastic. You take, if you talk about the Harrison Bay uh, near the golf course, we have we ha uh, we have a, an eagle cam at uh, Harrison Mills. Maybe that's the same one, or is this completely different? I think it's different, actually. Okay, that's another Harrison Bay. There are many. There are many. But anyway, uh, Kevin, you've traveled a lot. Tell us a bit. Of, I'm always excited when I hear about people traveling. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your travels and uh, what you've seen and why you traveled. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, I'm a birder, so I go to as many locations as I can to see as many wild birds as I can, and I keep what is called a life list. And right now my life list is that somewhere around... 1,145 species. I've been to Ecuador and Bolivia, and most recently I just went to southern India, uh, all with Dr. Alsop, and we took two-week tours around the country to see as many birds as possible. Uh, I've also been to Canada and, and uh, the Bahamas and all around the United States, so it's been a very fun hobby. It gets me around to <laughs> see a lot of cool things. You know, that's really wonderful. One, you said 1,145 bird species. You keeping such an account, when did you first get interested in birds and why? <laughs> in, in 2009, when I came to uh, East Tennessee State University, uh, I met <clears throat> Dr. Alsop, and he just took me under his wing, if you'll excuse a bad bird pun. <laughs> uh, we, um, that's okay. <laughs> just, just, just hit it off. Uh, he's been a good friend and mentor, and I've been very very lucky in my uh, educational career so far. <laughs> well, very nice. So tell us a little bit about the eagle nest and the eagle cameras. That's what we're all excited to hear. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, East Tennessee State University Biological Sciences Department has uh, put uh, eagle, put uh, live streaming cameras on two different local bald eagle nests, one in Johnson City and one in the nearby Bluff City area, which is about uh, 12 minutes north of the Johnson City Nest, uh, both on private property, both on uh, land owned by amazing people that were very willing to help out. Uh, we um, coordinated with the two local power boards, and they were willing to help out with uh, construction costs and were very instrumental in putting up the, the uh, cameras. We have two cameras on both nests, so we have... Uh, four cameras total. Both have uh, IR viewing for, for nighttime. Uh, on the Johnson City Nest, we have an overhead cam, which is really nice during the uh, the pip watch phase. Uh, and while the eaglets are young, we can see them very well on the overhead cam. And uh, the infrared is very 
nice at night to see raccoons and such in the nest. <laughs> um, Brandon Bragg is our intrepid tree climber that actually installed the cameras at the Johnson City location. He was in the tree seven hours on the first camera. <laughs> Well, and, uh, I've, been, I've been up there. I know how difficult it is. <laughs> so yes, yes, it's it's very difficult, and it takes a special breed of people. <laughs> and and so the, that's our that's our nest. And the birds, uh, do they have names? The the parents? Yes, uh, our Jaffa City pair is named Noshi and Shima. It's a native language. Noshi means father, and Shima means mother. Um, in our Bluff City nest is actually newly abandoned unfortunately because raccoons nested in the in under the nest bowl itself under in the off season and the pair decided to move on down the river a little way. Um their names are Francis and Eugene after the landowners that are currently there. Well, the old landowners I guess. The new landowners are haven't been identified yet. <laughs> Yeah, and I think you told me before they they usually um, lay eggs around early February, right? Yes. And they lay eggs early February. We uh, expect youngsters in March. Great, great, and they're usually about two, right? That's yes, mm -hmm. yes. Two has been the norm, except for the 2015 nesting season, where both nests lay two eggs, but only one hatched in both nests. So we had one infertile egg in both nests. <laughs> and then a difficult question because. Um, it's uh, eagle cameras are very expensive to set up to run. Where do you get your funding from? We are actually entirely funded by donors and sponsors. Uh, we have a web page up where you can donate directly to the eagle cams, the uh, biological sciences department. It goes entirely for the eagle cams. Nobody gets paid. It's all volunteer. So we don't have a budget line from the universities. So this is floating entirely on donations, and Whoa. people have been extremely generous. Well, that's it. that's so nice to hear. And Kevin, finally, uh, you are now. You said you finished your your graduate uh, student of biology. What's uh, what's up in the future for you? What are you going to do? I am going to be an educator of sorts. Um, I enjoy teaching the public about conservation, and uh, it's one of my passions. So I think that's a good fit for me. That's absolutely wonderful. And what is actually your, you know, if you have 1,000, I have to ask you that, 1,145 species, what is your favorite bird? You don't have to say eagle here, okay? <laughs> You're not going to be slaughtered. <laughs> Bald eagles. No, um, I really enjoy woodpeckers as a group, actually. They're just fun to watch. <laughs> they remind me of my undergraduate career, beating my head against a tree, you know. Oh, <laughs> that's good. And what about hummingbirds? <laughs> oh, I love hummingbirds. Uh, in Ecuador, I saw over 55 species, and that's really incredible because we only get one here in East Tennessee. <laughs> right. Well, we get two. Regularly. Yeah. Oh, that, well, that's so exciting to hear because I'm off to Ecuador at the end of May, so I can't wait. <laughs> oh, yes. Happy travels. <laughs> well, Kevin. Oh, be yes. before I forget, before I forget, special shout out to Michelle France, who is our amazing eagle cam volunteer she's a self-identified eagle holic and she just she's just tickled to death to be able to control local bald eagle nest cams because he's been watching eagle cams for years so a lot of our footage comes from michelle france especially in the last two nesting seasons where i've been too busy to really <laughs> pitch in as much but we could not have done most of our nice footage without Michelle France. So, <laughs> Well, big, big thank you to Michelle. Big thank you to you, Kevin. And if you can, join us on Friday, okay, around um, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we'd love to have you there. And maybe in future, you know, when I talk about hummingbirds and other things, I'd love to talk to you again because you sound really very enthusiastic and passionate about what you're doing, which is wonderful. Oh, yeah. I, I love birds, yeah. I'd, I'd love to join you. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Kevin. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you. Well, that was Kevin. Wonderful. As you can hear, this is how we like students to be so enthusiastic. It's really incredible. So, then let's jump right into the berry nest. That is going to be the first nest we're going to do some reporting tonight on. And so what is so wonderful now is, uh, just one second, I'm just going to go back uh, to the beginning of this, this show here. Right, there we go. That's the first picture. Okay, so you can see all the pictures are labeled. I don't have to jump in anymore. 
and uh, look look at my notes you can see they put all um, the egg information all my wonderful raptor helpers put the egg information and you can see egg number one was laid on January 3rd and egg number two January 6th so everything's clear and then the hatching dates expected hatching dates respectively are the 7th of February I presume that goes on the 35 day calculation so the, <laughs> that's the first one uh, uh, very nice dad traps uh, trips over ma that's the first one <laughs> really beautiful and there you can see dad brings in sushi there we go they're very nice and ma ate it all that's the way it should be isn't it and here's the next one dad's new coat you see everybody has new coats so do we <laughs> uh, the horrible uh, winter there has been uh, in the past unknown flyer in mom and dad's airspace yeah we know that that happens really often oh there's a bit of snow at nest during small snowstorm and you can see the dates that was all from the 16th uh, so um, where are we now 16th ah yeah there we go dad barry oh yeah here we have uh Erlene cameron taken on the 17th thank you for that beautiful com uh, contribution here it says hang on get out of the way sorry let me just get out of the way here the chase is on the chase is on that's a beautiful contribution and i have to just see the other was of course gina who else should it be it's gina <laughs> nice contribution for gina thank you very much gina and another beautiful one here seeing eagles in georgia so that is obviously not the uh, berry nest it is it is in the vicinity that is my understanding right gina i think so and here's another one did someone play the <laughs> play with the thermostat yes i think that's what happened <laughs> it went so cold and then it went so hot and there's max again very nice uh dad chases intruder off the nest and off his campus my goodness lots of those right dad and <laughs> very nice peggy reactive dad berry very nice beautiful isn't that when they just take off and they really accelerate as they go down nice work there nice work beautiful and another one from peggy good good and now uh, we come to to lullaboo that squeaks <laughs> that that is <laughs> right I just have to switch it off that uh, Lollaboo writes to me, I hope I pronounced it correctly, Lollaboo, you're here too. This video was taken last season, but I thought you might, you know, you might get a kick out of this. B9 was in great form. Mom is calm as usual. Thank you for that <laughs> high frequency uh, sound in our ears. Really nice. Okay, next nest, DC. Here we go. Mr. President, let me see if that is the only, yes, that's the only uh, picture we have from DC this week. Uh, Close this window. There we go. Come on. Ah, there we go. So, Mr. President and First Lady believe teamwork makes the dream work. Yes. Big size difference in beak. You can absolutely see that. So, that's a beautiful audio on video not playing. Oh, I see. The audio was not playing on the video. Okay, that was that's good to know. Um, Susie, uh, that's, uh, I don't know why that happened, but it's good to know. I'll, I'll look into this. Can't hear okay but i hope you can hear me now again you said you can hear i hope i hope you all hear me again now because there's a lag yes okay anyway um but i hope i i hope i can you can hear me back now i know we have some lag here but it should be okay anyway let's go let's get to the northeast florida nest now and um, lots going on there let me get to the first picture here there we go so juliet with her catch I'm going to make myself a bit smaller just now so that I don't st uh, sit in the way of uh, so that I can read what's going on here. But it is, uh, there's Juliet with a catch. 
And we have something nice from the Northeast Florida nest, by the way. That is going to be our big question, a very nice contribution later. Yes, all is fine. That's good to know. That's good to know. Okay, um, here is another one. Julia chose of her beautiful wings. That's Tatine. Thank you, Tatine. That was the, those are your beautiful pictures, Tatine. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting Tatine too. I have to say that. Very nice. Uh, so great, great picture. And here we are, Spirit and Sky, that's their names now. Spirit and Sky mirror each other. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. They seem to be rather more calm. Um, but I think there's a, on the southwest, there's something that Lady Hawk also had some interesting contribution we're going to show later. So Spirit and Sky, uh, now their feathers have changed. Yes, and we're going to go through that, by the way. That's the main topic of today. Just pay careful attention if you want to win, in the, if you're number two and three in the, in the quiz. You don't have to pay too much attention. It's not going to be too difficult, but um, later I'll tell you from now on, pay big attention to what I'm saying. And then um, it'll, it's a hint for the quiz, right? You want to win. Of course you want to win. Good. So that's the Northeast Florida nest. My goodness, they're growing quickly. And let's go to the next nest here. Now comes the Southwest. And there we have a lot of contributions. A lot of contributions. So. Um, yeah, you know what? I just said I will get myself out of the way a bit and I make myself smaller, which I haven't done. Uh, there, that's much better. Now I'm a midget. Now let me get back to the Southwest Florida nest. Here we go. That's better. So, here we go. Osprey Mama, I see you too. That's very nice. <laughs> very nice to have you too. So, uh, here we go. Now you can read it much better. This uh, scrap of Harriet. Good. Here we go. So there, there we are. So that's this season. Oh, this, I can't even pronounce your name correctly. It's, I would have said Desiree, but it's probably Desiree, right? But anyway, M15 drops it, drops it on E10 and E11. How cool. We're going to talk about E10 and E11 in just a moment. There's another one from D. Yes, D, look, thank you for the contribution. Beautiful the way the, these juveniles take off. E9 in the pasture fledge day. Yeah, that was last year. Wonderful. And Ozzy and Harry, so that's an oldie here. That's an oldie. Beautiful, beautiful. Isn't that tree must be amazing? I see it again and again. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's cute. Jacqueline, that's beautiful here. M15 scratching. Very nice. <laughs> E9 on pasture fledge. Yeah, a fence. So there's a fence there. Fledge day. Very nice. Oh, and here it gets serious with Ozzy and Harriet. And here. Now we are with, let me see where we are. Oh yeah, that was still, that is still E10 and E11 taking turns, holding, biting a stick. Isn't it wonderful to have all these comments in that makes it so much nicer to broadcast. And here is another one from D, M15 fish uh, for, for E9 fledge day. Right. So that is getting some fish as a reward. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And look at, look at that, these pin feathers. This is incredible. Thank you, Jackie, for that beautiful contribution. And here, this is so typical of Fledge Day. You know, I've seen this on the beach of White Rock. If you ever want to um, uh, buy a book and donate something to the Hancock Wildlife Foundation, I, I took some beautiful images that are just like these on the White Rock Beach, and it just reminds me very nice, the beautiful ground observer contribution here. And back into the nest here, another one from Jackie, and here another one from D, M15. Brings fish to E9's fledge day. What a reward. Big party. <laughs> Great. And now it gets interesting because, and I'm, I'm absolutely in the way again. <laughs> I'm just going to get myself out of the way so you can read the comments here. Let's see if I can get myself out of the way on the other side. Otherwise, you cannot see. There. Now I'm on the other side. Isn't that better? So I just moved. So you can read. This is from Lady Hawk. This is what I call last minute news. So what Lady Hawk was remarking about, and I'm just going to go to her. These are some amazing images. Uh, I just got this afternoon. I wanted to share with you for a couple of reasons. As you know, the E's are so close in age and with only 20 hours of difference between them. Look at these side-by-side -side comparison of the, of the uh, talons. I include one image of the hallux of E10. I think we're going to see that still. Uh, from the camps, they look almost about the same size. There's been speculation that E11 is a female. And then she goes on, but they look quite similar. So 
if, the, if they are quite similar in size, are they two females or two males? Well, that's always the difficult question. We can't really answer that. Lady Hawk, you're absolutely right. So, let's jump on and uh, have a look at your pictures. Uh, that was just what she uh, wrote. And here, here they are. So, size comparison. Here you can see plus feathers. Uh, 10, uh, so, E10 is on the uh, left and E11 on the right. You can see that. Quite, quite big. Well, they have names now, but... Um, no, sorry, that's Northeast. They don't have names yet, sorry. North, uh, North, Northeast has names. Southwest, uh, they, they leave them in the, um, in, in, in the more scientific nomenclature. Side-by-side -side co uh, comparison talents here. That is right. Hi, I see Gretchen too. Very nice to see you. <laughs> comparison here of talons. There you can see that is the picture she was referring to. So, side by side, so uh, talons 10 left. Oh, I see, yes, yes. Okay, the t uh, 10 is on the left and, and 11 is on the right. And it does seem, but it may, it may be difficult, it does seem that E11 is bigger, looks like a female, could very well be. And isn't this wonderful? Plum kids <laughs> with E11 on top while well, they're wrestling. <laughs> That's great. And here, E11 talons uh, on top of uh, 10 below. Very nice, very nice. Uh, wonderful to see you all. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, in between at, at all, all the comments. So thank you. Just keep keep going, keep the live chat going. So thank you, Lady Hawk. And here's another one: E10 uh, on the left and E11 on the right. Now, isn't that nice if they put when they put this together so you can really compare? <laughs> That's not a bad comparison. Very nice submission. I can see why Lady Hawk was so keen to show this to all of you and share this. And the final image here, E10 left talon versus E11 on the right. Again, surprising, but again, it could be a little bit of, um, you know, difficult to see because we would, they would really have to stretch, um, what is it, num, yeah, yeah, two and three out properly so that we can have a proper comparison, all the halluxes out completely, really, Lady Hawk, to make, to make a comparison. The, the resolution is 1A, it's absolutely top. Uh, thank you so much for enriching our lives with these beautiful contributions to all of you. Thank you so much. And again, remember, if you want to contribute, uh, I'll put the email out later. It's zassamedia at gmail.com. It's not zassaphoto anymore. Send it to zassamedia because the whole Raptor team can take care of it and that'll improve the quality. They're going to label your pictures, make it much nicer for the viewers. Really valuable contribution. I am so excited. Okay, that was the Southwest Florida nest. Then let's go on to the trio. Yes, we have something interesting from the trio nest. There are two pictures here. This one is from Connie, a young juva, uh, juvie, sorry, successfully capturing a meal. Uh, lock, yeah, lock and dam number 14 preserved. I've never been there, but I've seen the pictures from the trio uh, nest, so I can, uh, I can see where approximately that would be. Beautiful contribution, isn't that? When one catches this moment, it's often so difficult to, uh, to, to get this, Connie. Great contribution. And you can see here really the difference between a juvenile catching a fish and an adult. No problem. I catch it with one, I got one more, right? And I can do whatever I want with that. So, beautiful comparison, right? I'll just jump back again so you can see the juvenile again, catching, and then the adult. No problem, guys. I, I'm in full control here. <laughs> Very nice. That was the trio nest. Now we go to other nests. So I've, got, uh, I've got Karen Lippy here on, on the phone. I'm just talking to her just a few hours before the show. And something's going on at the Hanover... Nest. Karen, could you please tell me who you are and also tell our uh, viewers and listeners what is going on? So I've got, uh, I've got Karen Lippy here on, on the phone. I'm just talking to her just a few hours before the show. And something's going on at the Hanover Nest. Karen, could you please tell me who you are? And so I've got, uh, I've got Karen Lippy here on on the phone. Oops, sorry, sorry, it's, it's working now. Before the show. And something's going on at the Hanover Nest. Karen, could you please tell me who you are and also tell our uh, viewers and listeners what is going on at the Nest and what the background is. Thank you. Okay, uh, 
I have been a volunteer at Kedora State Park for over 30 years and uh, have been a birder for even longer than that. And uh, we've had eagles here at, at our park for, for many years. Uh, in 2004, they built a nest, and then in uh, 2015, they put the, the camera on the nest so that we could see what was going on. And uh, we had a couple really good years. Uh, but uh, when they mounted the camera, they said one of the limbs was cracked. And they had concerns about that. Well, in June of 2017, that limb broke away. So that left only two of uh, the two main trunks of the tree to support the nest. So without the third support, it was doubtful whether they were going to be able to uh, pull off a nesting here this year. Uh, uh, Karen, how old is that nest? The nest was originally built in, for the season of 2004, so it's, I guess, 14 years. So it could well be over a thousand pounds, right? It's a heavy nest. Yes. Well, it had been, uh, it, it was never a really big nest because of the, the tree they put it in. They had, they didn't have a lot of room to expand. Uh, and there was, a, in, uh, this is her third male. Uh, when the, the second male came in and took over the territory, they moved the nest from this tree to another tree. They were in that tree for two years and did not successfully raise young. And then uh, they went back to this tree uh, at the end of that time, and uh, they began nesting here again and have been here ever since 2010. Right. And uh, so is there anything one can, uh, that uh, anyone's going to do now? What, what's the next step? Just wait for it to crash? Or what, what's the... Uh... Yeah, well, the... Uh, the nest uh, has been, it, it has collapsed before in 2007 and 16. At the end of that year, it oh, collapsed wow. and the eagles were man did manage to rebuild. Mm -hmm. But that uh, branch was still there at the time. Uh, the collapses are caused, I'm quite certain, because there is a family of squirrels that built their nest inside the eagle nest. And... Uh, They've been hollowing. You can hear them at nighttime chewing. Right. <laughs> you can also hear them through the day chewing. And they actually have chewed so many of the interlocking branches that held the nest together that it caused the, the collapse of the nest. Uh, in November, I was not, I had some surgery and was not able to go out for a while. And when I did go out, I was totally shocked. The entire bottom of the nest was gone. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we also had two mice that had been running around, which they called bright eyes. Uh, the mice have not been back, so I suspect they were in the portion of the nest that went down. Oh, my uh, goodness. <laughs> two days after that collapse, both of the sides uh, also slid off, only leaving a very small part of the nest. Uh, the eagles have been working feverishly, rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. Uh, but without the main support at the bottom of the structure, I would watch her come in and place a limb, and three limbs would fall out from down below. And when uh, they... In spite of all that, they mm -hmm. did get the nest back. It was looking pretty good. And uh, then this, this happened now with the nest collapsing again. Uh, at least two squirrels in there. Wow. Uh, there may be more. Last year they were seeing four squirrels going in and out of the nest. When do they usually lay their eggs? In mid-February. Okay, so it's really timely now, the time that they get this done. My, right. My goodness. Oh. They, they did bring in a few sticks yesterday after the collapse, but uh, today they were not in the nest woods. They've been moving around. Uh, I went out with a friend. We did locate them. Mm -hmm. uh, they were sitting in a very big tree along the water. So they may be shopping for a, a new area. And it might be possible they just took the day off and they'll go back to working on the nest again. Right, right. Well, okay. Well, th well thanks a lot, Karen. Thanks for keeping our listeners and viewers and also myself 
uh, in the loop. And if you have any updates, you know, just be free to call me, uh, give, uh, give me a call. And um, ho hopefully it will be some good news. Thank you. Yes, that's, that's what we're all hoping for. Okay. Thanks and good oh, luck. Sure thing. Thank you. Yep. Bye. 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 Well, isn't it wonderful to have these type of contributions? That was Karen Lippi and uh, very informative. You can see the incredible, that's what I absolutely enjoy is the level of education here. So thank you so much for that contribution. So under other nests also falls an eagle that some of you may be watching too. There is a harpy eagle uh, nest and um, we're going to approach them one day because I mean harpy eagles are of course absolutely fascinating. The nice thing is because we are raptors now uh, we, we will definitely expand. That's why we're called Talented Talons for those of you who just joined. Talented Talons 360. And here again, extremely rare, the harpy reader is actually considered a mythological creature. This beastly bird has been in a position in Greek mythology for over 3,000 years. Beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Right. Now comes some interesting. Iadora had a very interesting contribution here, a little bit shocking. So what this is about is we're talking about uh, in California and um, there, there are uh, illegal marijuana fields and unfortunately this is this reminds us a little bit again of the days of DDT and so on. Um, these, these people who just uh, think of money and nothing else and grow marijuana illegally uh, use certain uh, toxins uh, for rodents to kill them and a study shows that this is also killing owls. Really sad and this is something that uh, definitely should, should um, be looked at. Uh, so thank you for that contribution. Uh, then some positive news. They are back. Bald Eagle Pair returns to nest in Bay Area. Bay Area is of course California for those of you who don't know. And there is a big celebration because there is an elementary school. And I put all the links out, by the way, all the links uh, of the contribution you'll find directly underneath the stream. So this is uh, a big celebration for an elementary school. Wonderful, wonderful to get uh, children educated like this. Sorry, that was without sound, I just realized that. But uh, the sound is not important. That was a contribution here from Laurie, who said, well, there's, a, there's this beautiful bald eagle. And um, again, the links are going to be below. Uh, if you've never seen a bald eagle catch a fish, this is a beautiful documentary. So the, um, the, the sound was missing here, but it is, it is not that important. Now we come to now we come to Jersey Me. Jersey Me is also here. There you are, Jersey Me. You, get, you sent us this beautiful email. Thank you so much. And this is about Hayes again, right? And um, so, so Jersey Me does these beautiful photographs and has also given me a link here uh, to the Pittsburgh Hay, Hayes Bald Eagle Nest. And there has been a lot of drama at that nest. We covered that previously. Um, uh, Jersey me we did cover we did cover that in one of the streams uh, I do remember that was I think uh, where the nest collapsed uh, where the second egg or the third egg uh, and then the third egg hatched somewhere else it's an absolutely incredible story uh, correct me if I'm wrong but that's that's how I remember it so we are very aware of the the nest it's quite an incredible nest now from the Chicago Tribune bald eagles this is an interesting story by the way one second, I'm just going to put myself back in here. Um, where am I? Here, there I am. Okay, so let's just jump back. This is, this is rather interesting because 
uh, the this uh, the the and again the link is you can find below. The Chicago Tribune is talking about the numbers in Illinois dropping and that they think there's a fe uh, fear of dropping uh, numbers. Now this is not an easy question. There are over 100,000 bald eagles in North America, right? So that's that's a lot. Nobody knows the exact. Uh, um, number and because the migration pattern is so complex only very few are tracked so far uh, so whether this is a local problem or whether this is a, a more regional or global problem is impossible to answer we have noticed that in harrison mills the numbers and david hancock has kept incredible track on this have uh, declined rapidly uh, in some years so we don't actually know whether this is a phenomenon or whether the eagles are just moving to other areas. But do have a read and tell me what you think. The next contribution, one second, sorry. The next, the next contribution comes from, yes, this is from Mark. Now this is quite a story, right? So this apparently happened today. Uh, in his in in where in the county of Snohomish, where Mark Horner, my friend, lives, and uh, there is a five thousand dollar reward. Can you believe it? There are some uh, there are some absolutely irresponsible people who are still think that eagles should be shot. Uh, whether this was an accident or whatever is beside the point. Uh, this eagle died, um, and um, I think that the Fish and Wildlife uh, Organization is still looking for the um uh is, is is still looking for for the culprit so i have posted the link below uh, if you know anything or saw anything please tell your friends uh, that is the number uh that that you can reach to the u.s fish and wildlife service and uh, the reward came from one thousand to five thousand because there was a veteran who actually pushed up the uh the reward this shows you know this is great this is in all this sad news this is what makes, uh, you know, makes my heart jump because there are people really care about wildlife and eagles now. And I can see how many there are of you. And that is a good, good sign. It's, it's so encouraging. So these $5,000 are, this is what we think, you know, uh, really should, should um, be there as, uh, as a reward to find people who are responsible for such incredible crimes. So thank you, Mark, for that great contribution. Okay, so we are moving very fast. You can see how, how we uh, really progress. So I'm going to get out of the way. We now jump. And let me just, um, before I get out of the way, I'm just going to make myself a bit larger. If you can see me, let me just explain the next section. So we've done all the nests now, all the other things. You can see uh, we've got a completely new way of doing it. I do hope you like it. And please give us a thumbs up, please. All you need to do is press the thumbs up button whilst you're looking, okay? Just press the thumbs up button. It just motivates so much, right? It's just a big, it's so easy. Just thumbs up and that's it, okay? Thank you so much. Our team will be delighted to see thumbs up here, right? Okay, so. Don't forget that. Now we come to the next section. And this section is about eagle growth. You remember we talked about eagle growth and, and Lady Hawk had an incredible contribution some weeks ago. So I want you to pay incredibly careful attention to how fast these eagles grow. And then we will go a little bit into the science of eagle growth. How do we actually know whether it's a male or a female? Is it actually possible to distinguish that? And, and so do have a look first. It's going to be uh, an image carousel, so I'm going to go through every week quickly. So just enjoy a few minutes of just seeing a rapid uh, eagle growth in northeast, I think it was, no, that was, sorry, it was southwest, sorry, it was southwest Florida last year. That was southwest Florida last year. And you can pay careful attention also to the egg size. And then uh, we'll scroll through that. I'm going to be quiet now and get out of the way. And then we'll get to the, to, to the, to, to the science of all that.
Yeah, that was my friend Bradley again. Didn't he do something beautiful just about ego growth before we touch the subject? So here we go. Okay, so the images are just going to scroll through in about three seconds interval. So we are now at week zero, right? That's week zero. Now comes week one. Whoops, what happened there? I got the wrong images. <laughs> Sorry about that. That it was my mistake. The one we jumped to read, <laughs> that's week one. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Sorry. I must have uh, organized something wrong. Don't worry. We'll go to week two now. We'll skip week one. <laughs> oh. Okay, you can see how massive the talents are. Now comes week three. This is really be beautiful contribution. And week four. I just look at that massive. Now watch how quickly it goes. Week five. Isn't that incredible? From week four to week five. This is something you have to really uh, appreciate. It's incredible. Week six. Week seven. And week eight. Oh my goodness, look at that. You remember last week I talked about the scales uh, on, on the talons? Uh, in order to hold fish. Now comes week nine. And now, of course, you cannot see that big size difference anymore. Here's, the, here's of course, branching going on. And finally, fledging and so on, week 10. Remember those pictures? It's incredible, isn't it? Beautiful. Ah. Okay, very nice. So now we come to the main topic. I'm just going to put my, uh, make myself small here so I'm not in the way. So today we're going to talk about the science of eagle growth. Now this is this very interesting. There has been a, a remarkable biologist, an eagle biologist by the name of Bortolotti. Unfortunately, he passed away from leukemia a few years ago. He was quite young. I think he was still in his early 60s when he passed away. But he did some incredible contribution to science. Uh, he writes the following. So this is criteria for determining age and sex of nestling bald eagles. And this has been, he developed a method that is actually, uh, that is still adopted by all kinds of raptor centers if they don't use DNA samples. He writes, I monitored the development of 64 young bald eagles from 48 nests for the nesting periods of 1980 to 1902 at, at Bursnard Lake in Saskatchewan, so it's Canadian. The lake supports about 23 breeding pairs. And now it gets interesting. I climbed to the nests when hatching appeared imminent and thus observed eggs pipping or in the process of hatching for all of my studies. For the first two weeks after hatching, I climbed to the nests and took a few measurements of the nestlings to minimize disturbance of the birds. Subsequently, my assistant climbed to the nest and lowered the eaglets to the ground, to the ground where I measured them. The birds were handled every five to eight days until they were about 60 days old, right? Uh, when I stopped, 
because of increasing risk of nestlings prematurely leaving the nest. Eaglets older than 60 days, um, uh, 60 days old were captured on the ground by hand and measured. Now this is quite interesting. I don't think that this method, at least not in David Hancock's opinion, would be used anymore because any disturbance nowadays of any nest whatsoever would be seen as absolutely completely unacceptable. At that time uh, one has to understand it historically also differently because it was a big joy to see the eagle population rise again and of course Canada in many nests had, had, had a lot more uh, uh, eagles and nests than many places in, in, in the States at that time. So uh, anyway he did a fundamental, uh, some fundamental research and I'm going to show you that. Uh, these figures are a little bit difficult to see. I'm just going to show you what they have here is the growth rate. Okay, the growth rate. I'm going to replot them and make this a lot more pleasant to see. I took all the data from his, his and I, I um, uh, converted it to a chart that is more manageable. And this is the result of that. So I took Lady Hawk's images here every week. So on the x-axis, that is the horizontal axis, let me just get a, a Yeah, here's our arrow. Okay. The horizontal axis is this axis, right? That axis. That has the number of days. Oops, are we still live? Hang on. I hope I hope we're still live. Hang on. Just something jumped here. One second, I just need to see. I, I lost the comments there. Oh yeah, we are still live. We're still fine. We're still good, thank you. Thank you. Okay, for a moment I thought something had happened, but it's fine. So, on the horizontal axis we have the number of days. And what you can see there are two, I better not move this arrow too much because I think this arrow is causing a, a disruption. But what you can see is there are two curves that are, that are peaking. Now this is the growth rate. That is how much they're growing per day. So you can see that exactly with, with the pictures that uh, Lady Hawk showed, how they coincide, right? After tw between 20 and 30 days, they reach the maximum growth. And you can also see the brown curve is the female and the blue one is the male. And you can see that, that after 20 to 30 days, and that's a cumulative curve there. Their, their total weight is these other curves that sort of go like an S curve. You can see them. And then the female, the difference between the female weight and the male weight is, and you can see it on the Y axis, that's in kilograms. You want to convert it to pounds, you multiply it by 2.2. So the females typically, and these are trending curves, there's a variation in this. This is just sort of the mean value that I took there, is after 60 days, approximately 5 kilos which corresponds to around 12 pounds and more and the male is quite lighter. So that's the first observation that they had but there's variation and as Lady Hawk uh, uh, already mentioned it can be very difficult if you have two males or two females to know who's who. So there must be another method of doing this. So these are some pounds, uh, points I found on the internet which is quite interesting. It tells you a little bit about the way eagles grow. After about two weeks it is possible for them to hold their heads up by feeding, you know that. And they can weigh, uh, add one pound uh, to their body weight every four or five days. That's absolutely true uh, if you look at the curves. Now this is the final curve and you'll get a bit confused. Say, what has Christian done? I have reproduced um, uh, Bortolotti's data and put it. So let me just explain. I'm going to get the arrow back and I might lose the stream for a second. Okay, I want to you to first look at the bottom part. The bottom part. On the horizontal axis, and now pay careful attention, this is going to be one of the quiz questions. Hint, 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 hint. <laughs> if you're one of the lucky ones <laughs> to come through. So, on the bottom axis, on the x-axis, you have the build depth. The build depth is like measuring this, right? That's the build depth. They, 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 can, they typically measure that. The build depth, and on the vertical axis, is the size of the foot. Now that's strange. Why would you plot both of them? Now if you, put, if you plot two measurements, one on the vertical axis and one on the horizontal axis, you get a point on the map. And what's interesting is all the males are at the bottom part and all the females are on the top. So there's a clear separation now that one has. 
between them after about six to eight weeks there's a very clear separation so it means if you measure the total foot path or some just measure the hallux and the bill uh, the beak depth you have a clear criterion or you have clear, clear criteria for separating uh, separating males from females so this is why this graph is so interesting and there's really a clear cut I mean if you then look at the female population up there, you can clearly see there's a difference, right? So now comes the question, how do biologists do that? And Peter Sharp, who I've interviewed a few weeks ago, you'll remember that, from, from the Institute of, um, of uh, uh, Wildlife Studies, Institute for Wildlife Studies, I think it was, uh, who does the Channel Islands uh, nests, he says, he wrote to me, I sex the nestlings almost entirely on beak depth at eight weeks of age. Now listen carefully, below 32 millimeters, they are always males, almost almost. He says almost always. And above 32, uh, they are almost always females. And that is exactly this graph that you see the separation of the two. So this is the conclusion. So it's quite, um, quite interesting. That is the way you can distinguish between males and females. So the 32 millimeters, if you can't, if you don't, that's just over an inch, right? An inch is 25 point, uh, what is it, 25.2 uh, millimeters. So it's just over an inch. It's uh, maybe a one and a quarter inch or so. That is the decisive point where you can distinguish males from females. And now think of Dahlia. We, saw, we, we were looking at Dahlia's development. Remember these beautiful images from Dahlia, this huge peak of Dahlia. Uh, uh, I, was it northeast? You have to remind me. Was it, I think it was northeast, right? Uh, Dahlia's development and uh, coming back as a, uh, returning as a, um, a juvenile a few years later. And that is how some of the observers recognize or, or believe to recognize that as Dahlia. So there you go. Very, very nice contribution. And, gosh, we are moving at such a speed. You know how much I enjoy this because I can bring so much information. So please give a big hand to my wonderful team that is giving me all this great support. And now we come to the exciting part of the quiz. And let me explain to you how the quiz works. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. I like because We're covering so much ground in such a short time. It's great. This is the way it should be. So the quiz, the quiz, the quiz works as follows. Now, you see behind me, these are all my images. I've got a huge pot of my images. These are my best images, right? So you can really, if you win, you can win these images, okay? So I will email them to them. You can use them for personal re uh, uh, reason. So the way the quiz works is as follows. I'm now going to show you a contribution about the Northeast Florida nest. The question will be what happened next. Okay? Now, the way it works, I'm going to give you a phone number. And that's the new phone number, 425-223-4960. That's again, 425-223-4960. That is going to be the phone number to call in for you. And the big difference here is going to be that there can be three callers. Now, what happens? If you call a number one, if you call a number one, you just have to answer the question correctly, what happened next? If you do that, uh, if you do that, then you win, win a picture. Now, how do we select the pictures? This comes with a random generator. So it's like a, a shovel. Uh, uh, I'm going to shovel and have it on the other computer. You're going to see how I do that. And it picks out one image from the pot and that's going to be your winner. Okay, so there's no more choosing. It all happens at a, you know, with, with a random. So it's more fun in a way. I have no idea what image is going to come out, but it's just uh, more exciting. So then number two comes through. So number two, I'm going to ask you a question about today. Don't be afraid. It's going to not be a very difficult question. Um, and uh, then you, you have a chance to answer that. And then comes number three, and you'll have the same, also a question to answer. And if you like this, we can do many more quizzes, right? So uh, let's try that. So you've got your number there. And I have to switch now to the phone system, which I just did. So it should still work. Um, no, before I w uh, switch to the phone system, I first have to show you the clip. Uh, let's see. So this is a contribution from Cindy. The question is, 
What happened next? What happened next? Pay careful attention. Did you see that? Let's do it again. Dad's flying in there. He's flying in. Pay attention. Once again. Ah, does the computer not want to come a computer? What's wrong with you? Ah, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't feel like showing it again. He says he's I've just done it. Why did why should I show it again? <laughs> okay, never mind. Oh my goodness, I, I've already got somebody here who thinks they know the Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Elizabeth? Hello? I've got somebody here already, but I am receiving no answer. Hello? Okay, let's answer. Hello? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Very good. Okay, so you, I haven't even, <laughs> that is amazing. I haven't even yet shown uh, anything more and you think you know the answer. Who are you please and where are you calling from? This is Kim. I'm calling from Tampa. Hi. hi. I thought you showed the clip. <laughs> so what clip did I show? What happened next? You showed Romeo flying in and I think you flew in with a plant and disappointed those eagles. A plant? You think so? I hope so. I'm not, I'm not so sure it's a plant. I think, you know, you're, you're on the right track, but I think you have to, it's not, they don't bring a plant. What else do they bring in? You're almost there. Oh. Almost. The moss man. He brings in a clump of moss. <laughs> in this case, it was not moss. There was something else. I'll give you one last chance. What else would he bring in if he doesn't bring in moss? And no food. What he else? Not food. A branch. Yes, yes. He brings in a branch. The stick man. The stick man. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Exactly. He's, you're absolutely right. He is the stick man. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to... So congratulations, it is. And I'm just going to show the, the viewers what actually happened here. So let's just, well, I'll show them in a moment. But what I'm going to do before is I'm going to jump over to the other screen. I hope I don't mess this up now. Um, yeah, you know what, if I, if I, you know what, we'll do your random generator. I just noticed I might get an audio problem um, and there'll be a lot of echoing. So I, I probably have to, um, you know, we'll, we'll do your random um, selection just now. We've got your name. It's Kim, right? That's correct. Okay, Kim. So we've got that. And um, so we'll, we'll, we'll let the random generator go for you. And you can watch which image you're going to uh, uh, win then. So thank you very much for, for taking part. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, hello? What happened there? Hello? 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 Hi, who's, who am I talking with? <laughs> Hi, hello? Hi, can you hear me? Wait. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, very good. So what, who are you? From where are you calling? My, my name is Carol. I'm from Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York. Well, welcome to the show. So I'm uh, Karen. I'm going to ask you a question now about the show. It's not a very difficult question. If you watch tonight, you'll know. What was the featured nest tonight? What was it? What was the featured nest? The featured nest. Yes. What did we? Oh dear. Yes. Which one was it? Which one did I feature? <laughs> which one was it? I. I. I I started watching later, so I don't know. Okay. Well, <laughs> sorry. That's that's okay, but unfortunately, I can't uh, g um, give you a prize for that. But thank you for. Oh, that's okay. It's just fun to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Karen. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Let's see if there's anybody else. We can still. Uh, we have another person. Thank you. Oh, that's 
Hello? Hello, can you? Yes, hello. Hi, whom, I, uh, to whom am I talking to, please? Uh, Chip Baco in Northeast Tennessee, very, Kingsport. Very nice. Good evening in Northeast Tennessee. Well, this is going to be, uh, then we have uh, another question. If you've been watching carefully now, how do we distinguish a male eaglet from a female eaglet? Just give me one or two ways of doing it visually. How would you do it? Um, the, the size of the beak. Yes, that's it. Is, is, and and at uh, eight weeks, if the beak is greater than 32 millimeters, it's a female. And if it's less than 32 millimeters, it's almost certainly a male. Now listen to that. So that is that is fantastic. And do send uh, do send an email, please. I, I also have to say that to the uh, to the first um, uh, to win, please send an email to zasamedia at gmail .com. I will put that in. Uh, uh, you know, in a moment, I'll just put put it in zasamedia gmail.com. So you see the email there. So just send us an email and I'm going to draw your prize in a moment. OK, we'll do that all together. Uh, three random okay. pictures. OK, so thank you so much. So you're, right. you're number you're two. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for participating. Bye. 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 OK, the line's still open. Anybody else wants to wants to have a shot? Oh, they do. They love this. <laughs> Hello, whom, I, whom am I talking to? Okay, the line's still open. Anybody else wants to, wants to have a shot? Hello? Uh, hello? Yeah, just turn the volume down a little bit hello. from the broadcast because I can't hear you. Hello? Oh. Hello. Hello. Hi, who are you, please? With whom am I talking? Uh, this is Rachel in Louisiana. Rachel in Louisiana, wonderful to have you here. I hope you're enjoying the show. <laughs> I love it. I've been watching you ever ever since um, the little red tail hawk, Stephen Hawking. You have. Well, then, then I'm going to ask you a question on the red tail hawk. Where was the where is the nest of the red tail hawk located? Do you remember that? Uh, I know it's in BC. Um, oh, you got me. I got you. <laughs> I lost it. Okay. Well, do you know where in BC you got it? Just, just give me. Um, is it on the mainland or is it on an island? Do you remember that? It's on an island. That's that's correct. And. And um, that's correct. And there's one, well, I'll, let's try and get a little bit closer. There's one very famous big old city on Vancouver Island, that's where it is, uh, where the nest is very close to, uh, closely located. You may not know that, but um, do you have an idea what that is? No. No, okay. That's you a, got me there. That's okay. But, any, but anyway, uh, well, th thanks, thanks for joining. The, the, the nest is called the Sydney nest. It's like Sydney, but it's not the Sydney, Australia. The Sydney yeah, nest. Yeah, it's the Sydney. Okay. That's okay. Don't worry. Thank you so much for participating. Okay. Um, one, one question before you go. Yeah, go ahead. Are you going to go, are you going to go back to that nest again and see if, um, if, Stephen Hawkins shows up again? Well, you know, uh, that's a great question. So the question is whether, whether I'll go back to see if Stephen Hawkins... Uh, uh, the problem that we have is that there are so many... Uh, there, there are so many um, red-tailed hawks in North America. If you look at my, uh, the, the documentary that I did, it becomes clear how many there are, right? It's, uh, it's bald eagles, you have around 100,000, you're talking there uh, a million and more. So it's going to be very difficult to see because there are a lot of red-tailed hawks, so we unfortunately have no way of telling whether he came back. Okay. Well, take a shot at it anyway. <laughs> okay, I, I will. I will go back. Well, thank you for calling. Thank you. Thank you, and I enjoy the show immensely. Well, that's, uh, it's, it's a, it was a pleasure, really a pleasure to have you online. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. 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 Okay, so let's see if we can take one more call here. Hello? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
Hello? Hello, with whom am I talking, please? This is Caroline in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Oh, in Kentucky. My goodness, isn't it cold right now in Kentucky? Oh, it has been. Really cold. <laughs> yes, it has. It has, right? It's been really cold. Well, welcome to the show. I hope you're enjoying it. Oh, I love it. I watch every time. Oh, well, that's, that's great. So my question is going to be to you, one about an eagle's nest. Uh, I was showing the trial nest tonight. Uh, what is so special about the trial nest? Do you know? Uh, there's three males and one female. Three males? Are you sure? Trial? Are you sure three males? Uh, three males and one female. Is that correct? Uh, it's well. It's a, it's definitely it's definitely a trial, and it's definitely uh, more males than females. But the tr the trial. Think again. It's a trial. What would it be? Uh, three. Yes, uh, the total would be three. So what would it be? Then you've got it. What would it be? Three males. I, I'm sorry. I must not. Understand. That's okay. No, if the total number is three, there are three eagles in the nest, right? Three parents. Oh, okay. Three. Uh, yes. yes. And I'm how? Sorry. No, that's okay. Don't worry. I, it's fine. So, how many? The question is, how many males and how many females would they be? Two males and one female. You got it. Bravo. So, um, so. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. So, so you you have won a prize. We're going to shuffle. You're the third winner, if I uh, if I see this correctly. And um, that's yeah. That's all we'll take tonight. So I think it's gone wonderful. And. Um, so let's just, um, yeah, let's just uh, call it a, a day with that. We're going to shuffle all the pictures now and you'll see what you've won. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Christian. I uh, love your show. You're well, most welcome. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. That was all the shows. Now we're going to do the shuffling. But uh, I'm going to just blend the, f the picture away now. Let me get my, uh, there we go, there we go. So we have three winners and we're going to do now a random process, but we're actually going to pull four images. Now, why do you think we're going to pull four images? Were there only three? Well, there's one person we forgot and that was Osprey Mama. That was terrible. Osprey Mama called in and she knew the answer and it was my makeup mix-up. I take full responsibility about our phone system wasn't good, so we lost her. So we're going to pull four images, one for Osprey Mama, okay? And anybody else who says, "Well, Christian, I knew the answer; it didn't work," just give me a uh, just just give me a, tell me that. I apologize for that, but the technology, as you can see, is a lot better now. So don't call in anymore. Uh, just remember the email. And a little bit of fun here now. So let's see, where is the... Yeah, that's right. This is the way it works. Let me just take my... Okay, I'm going to pull out three images at random. Now, this is a random generator. We're going to prove this in future, okay? So this is a random generator. And I'm going to pull out the first winner is going to have this image, okay? So I'm just going to press the random, please. And there is your image. That is a beautiful... Talon, that is the first winner, please. That is, a, by the way, a stacked image of a talent. So you're going to re receive congratulations. You're going to receive this. Uh, send us an email to zasamedia at gmail.com and our wonderful Raptor team will send you this talent in full resolution. Congratulations. That's image number one. And let's go again. So here is image number two, random. And there we go. This is... Uh, I can tell you exactly, this was taken at Harrison Mills, this won the first prize in a competition, and this is an eagle landing in the morning. So that is, congratulations to you and thank you for participating. That is participant number two. And this is all random, I have no idea, right? So this is number two, again, send an email to zasamedia at gmail.com. And here we go again. For number three, oh my goodness. There is, that's the beautiful mirror. This one is Morning Joy. That's called Morning Joy. You won the picture called Morning Joy. 
Doctor, should we not use Zasa Photo anymore? No, you should not use Zasa Photo anymore. Please only use Zasa Media now because it helps me a lot. Uh, I have so much help and I get completely overwhelmed. Okay, gentlemen, go. So just use Zasa Media, please. That's, uh, unless you want to send me a personal email, you can send it to Zasa Photo or so, but in general to Zasa Media is fine. So congratulations on that. That's the third one. And now comes Osprey Mama. You're going to have a, um, a random picture now. Oh my goodness. Here comes a golden eagle. This is also, this is the best picture I have of a golden eagle. It almost looks three-dimensional. I got just the moment where this golden eagle was spreading its wings, so you're going to have that. Congratulations to Osprey Mama. I hope you'll accept it in spite of it not being an Osprey. <laughs> very nice. So that all worked out. Uh, I'm very glad and thank you for, to Kevin, by the way. Kevin built this incredible phone system. I'm eternally grateful to Kevin. It was days of work, you know, until we got all this right. Was Kevin, we've all been working as a team to get this right and make it uh, much more amenable and enjoyable. And I hope this is a good sign for the future that you're going to enjoy doing many more of these. Okay, so we've, uh, that uh, brings the quiz to an end and now we're going to jump to Madagascar and it's David Hancock's turn. Now, there's a, a small, um, uh, there's a small problem with the audio. You hear the uh, occasional click. Just overlook that. I, had, that was, I was recording that a few weeks ago at a time where I didn't have the beautiful setup that I have now. I've spoken to David Hancock and we're going to tr try and do better for next week, uh, do a re-recording for the next week. But anyway, nevertheless, David Hancock, I think you will fully enjoy, enjoy his, uh, his, his beautiful uh, contribution here. So let's go. continent now we're going to the east of Africa to an island tell us a bit about that. well the main the big heliatus the sea eagle that was in Africa was called heliatus vocifera right. vocifera okay. the African fish eagle vocifera because it does a lot of talking and if you'll recall it's the voice of Africa it's the voice behind every wildlife film and, and the eagle's name even says that heliatus vocifera the noisy one kind of thing. Well, it's interesting. The sister population, this isolated population that exists only on the little island, it's a fairly long island, but um, this little island off, off the African continent, there's a little island endemic population of seagulls, right. and they're called, and this is going to tell you about their relationship, okay. Heliatus vociferoides so it's like vocifera but it's a little, kind of a, bit, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller though, yeah. and, and the interesting thing is <laughs> they're a gray-headed one they oh, don't have okay. the the white head uh, and okay. uniform cape uh, uh -huh. somewhat like right. the, the, like the african one does which is like the the bald eagle in north america it has a more gray head and that was the same thing with the sister population of the of the Australian eagle, the one on the little endemic island right. that off in the Solomon mm -hmm. was a, a more drab. In fact, it never even went into an adult plumage. This one is somewhat the same. Off Africa is this coast and a population of ones that just don't take on the full color. And it may be, and it has another very similar relationship mm -hmm. between this big massive population of mm -hmm. eagles on the African continent and the little group on Madagascar. It's like the big group in Australia and the few on the, the little island population in Madagascar is off to the east. Right. It is a way upwind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just jump to Madagascar yes. itself because it's a really a fascinating place. The island of Madagascar was never attached really to Africa. It came from part of the Indian subcontinent. It's a, a slice of the Indian subcontinent that got separated, slid across, floated across, however you want to call it, across the Indian Ocean, right, and got locked right. up against the edge of the African continent. Now, right. that was millions of years ago, before, before these sea eagles had evolved. Right, right. So the sea eagle actually didn't come from the continent of Africa. It actually had to get there from its close relative, on the African continent, not the Indian and continent. thereby was isolated for many, many years, right? And, it's yeah. been, and again, probably mm -hmm. isolated for 100 to 150,000 years. Again, it's upwind. So, K 
occasionally, I guess, an eagle has got from the African continent, but it's the wrong direction. They all want to, the wind carries them all the other way, so it's rare that one got there. And it's the same thing, the rarity of the animals that got to Madagascar. They aren't Indian continent animals, they're African continent, even though Madagascar, the island, came from India. The wildlife actually somehow got from Africa. And whether it was 150,000 years ago, there was huge volcanic activity or something, and great washouts of forest and right. swamp came down the rivers and floated and back eddied, and, and maybe big piles of junk landed on this Madagascar island. And that's maybe where the unusual lemurs from are from, because they were an early mammal, the early primate that was all over Africa. Right, right, right. Some got isolated. Mm -hmm. On Madagascar, the rest of the continent got overwhelmed by more advanced primates, um, more monkeys like, and but n monkeys never got to Madagascar. Right, so right, Madagascar right. contains this a hundred species mm -hmm. of very primitive primates called lemurs, mm -hmm. and they're still there. Well, not all hundred are still right, there because right, right. several right. Have, have become extinct. Same way, a whole bunch of birds got there, and a bunch of reptiles got there, and they all evolved separately with their own characteristics. And so now they're uniquely Madagascaran. Yeah. And it's the same way with, with this African fish eagle. When it got isolated on this island, it's evolved to a difference. But there are similarities. A little bit smaller than the African fish eagle, but it's predominantly a fish eater. Yes, right, right. But mm -hmm. there's not much shoreline. There's not a lot of fish. And so it has had to become a scavenger as well. And it goes in and it'll eat lemurs and so on and so forth and other dead things that it finds on the land. So it's had to be more versatile, but it's not abundant. There's today somewhere between 50 and 100, maybe only 100 pairs. The maximum number they figure is 100 pairs. So that's not a lot for a population of anything, no way. 100 pairs. So pretty rare endangered probably the rarest bird of prey in the world even rarer than the sanford uh, yeah well it's about the same the numbers it's right. about a, both of them have about a, a, a hundred um so mm -hmm. uh, conservationists are are not just interested in it they're interested in all this endemic life these rare lemurs mm -hmm. um a lot of which have already disappeared Anyway, so that that and how, different, you know, so, how, the, how, very, uh, how is it different to the uh, to the African fish? Well, it it big difference mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. instead of having this beautiful white head and the cape that goes down over a brown, a mm -hmm. very brown body, bright brown body, um, the head is much lighter and, and tanner, and and so it hasn't got that striking look that the African eagle, um, where we have our meetings. Mission mm -hmm. across the valley from here, where we hold our bald eagle meetings all the time. There's a pub. We, we have to hold them somewhere, and so we often have our meetings in a pub. Okay. And it was a great frustration to me. Behind my seat, where I sat at the end of this table holding the, the, the meeting, was a picture labeled the bald eagle, and that bald eagle was a picture of an African fish oh eagle. My <laughs> and that's right on the Fraser River. And that's some, like, that's somebody had sold this a big mouth frame print of, of an African fish eagle and labeled it a bald eagle because they do they look alike. And and it turns out that the Madagascar again looks particularly like a typical fish eagle and particularly in its immature plumages. So one one of the things is because it's on this island very little food, mm -hmm. very few birds. They they have taken to what is what is known as a. Um, oh, geez, I have to look the word up again because I forgot. Oh, it's called polyandry. Polyandry. We, you've talked about this before. It's happened with our bald eagles on mm -hmm. the Channel Islands and a couple of other places. Mm -hmm. We'll get two males and a female, or or reversed. All oh, right. Watch and the trial, in this right? case. Yeah. Um, in this case, it's usually one female with two males right. on these nests on, on this little island. Thought again to result because there's so little food, right. so little areas, that it may take two males to help raise the young. I mean, that's one oh, thought on it. Because right, the, right. The, the males go off and right. hunt yeah, the young, right. while the female guards the eggs, feeds the babies. 
she stays there while two males come and bring in the food supply. So it's, it's kind of interesting. And because they are like most of the, the sea eagles, they, raise, they lay two eggs, sometimes three, rarely three, but two, usually hatch two. But like in a few areas, almost always one chick kills the other, and it's called siblicide oh, or, or fat, fratricide, but brother killing brother. A siblicide usually means one baby in a nest killing the other. And it almost always happens on the Madagascar really? uh, eaglets. Thought to be because there's not enough food. And it may be the same explanation as why it takes two males to help. But there's just not as much food available. It's so so it's a, yeah. a, an interesting theory to support this. Wow. And it may be partly the same reason why it happens in, in other areas. I mean, it's one of the theories. It, mm -hmm. it may not be the right. ultimate reason, but, but it... Okay. It's considered to be. So because it takes two males and one female, there's more inbreeding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's not a very big population. So this is one of the other worries. Not only does the inbreeding facilitate the moving of, of whatever new genes are from there being a, a mutation, mm -hmm easily move that through the population. But it also means that if there's a bad gene, something right. that's, that's negative to their survival, that gets moved through, so that puts a population at higher risk. If a bad gene moves through, it could cause uh, more mortality. So this is the kind of balance. If you're isolated, you might become different looking more easily, but you also might go into extinction more easily. Right. If, if you've got some bad gene that gets carried along and times change and that bad gene becomes legal rather than being just bad. So it, it's kind of interesting that isolation has some wondrous things in, in causing new speciation, but there are risks associated with it. So I mean, there we are. It's a sister okay. species to the African a uh, common African fish eagle. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that from David Hancock. Again, my apologies for the audio, not as good as it should be, but we are getting there. So I come now to the final part, and that is questions from viewers. And Marion had a question. She said, I have a Nikon D90 and the best lens I have is a 100 millimeter lens. I'm planning a trip to Hog Island in Maine this summer and hope to photograph ospreys there. Please advise on best equipment. Yeah, well, that is a great question. That is a great question, Marion, and I can certainly help you with that. First of all, let me just explain magnification to you. Magnification means if you have a 50 millimeter lens, it is the magnification of one to one. So 100 millimeters is a magnification of two to one. So that means it's not a huge magnification. Unless you're very close to a bird, you may not, you will get the bird uh, usually flying at an incredible speed quite, especially ospreys are very difficult uh, to, um, uh, to uh, photograph when they're in a dive. So it takes a lot of skill to do that. What I would advise you if you have a Nikon is uh, if you want light, light equipment, uh, then tr go for the 300 millimeter. The 300 millimeter gives you a six times magnification. That's quite good. It's a new type of Nikon. Now these are not cheap. Lenses are not cheap, but if you want quality, if you want quality, that's what you need to go for, right? So go for something better. You can buy lenses also used. I would go either for the 80 to 200 or the 300 millimeter. There are new lenses also from Nikon, by the way, and the same goes for Canon. It doesn't matter whether you have Nikon or Canon. I'm not defending uh, any of these. There is a bigger lens here, and this is a new one that goes all the way from 200 to 500. If you can hold such a lens, with a hand or so and follow a bird that way then this would be probably the best to do because you have a zoom on here uh, that that you can uh, easily use um, if, for ospreys it's not easy with a tripod because you have to follow them as they dive unless they're sitting perched then you can use a tripod right so it depends on what you do i hope that answered your question light shouldn't be a problem nowadays the d90 is although it's an older model it's a very good camera okay so i hope that helped so 
That brings me and let's just get me complete. Yeah, there we go. So, my friends, I think that was, I hope you, you really enjoyed this first, um, you know, this, this first new show. You can see it's all about Raptors. I'm glad that we had some winners. I'm glad it actually worked. Uh, we didn't have major crashes. I really want to thank all of you for participating. Uh, the people I've interviewed, I wanted to thank my, my team from my heart. Um, really the four new team members have done incredible work uh, and we're going to improve the show. I've seen all the communication go on and most of the communication I'm following all the time uh, in, in the window as um, uh, you know the chat window. I'm so glad. I hope you enjoy this and do contribute. If you have ideas, if you, if you want to submit some quizzes, what happened next or questions, go ahead. Again, write to Zasse Media. That is the new and only that should be relevant now. So this is the email address that um, uh, you should, uh, uh, you know, you, you should pay attention to. And having said that, then I I will uh, sign off now and wish you a very uh, wonderful weekend. And I hope to see you uh, soon again. So I'm just going to jump here now. There's still no easy way for me just to stop a stream, but I'm going to do it now. So again. All the best, my friends. Thank you for joining. And remember the thumbs up. Press the thumbs up. If you want donations or so, I'm always happy there's a donation thing beneath. You're just helping the cause of expanding education for wildlife, which is so important. All that is, is very welcome. Or you go to SmugMug, you buy a nice image. That is also a wonderful contribution. I think it's something you will, will really enjoy because I take these images with all my heart and passion. Okay. So give us a thumbs up for that and thank you. And don't forget to press the bell sign, the notification sign, and you'll be part. Okay, so that's it then, my friends. Bye-bye.